The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Hawaii Money Resource with financial advisor Marco Muscovich. Marco Muscovich is registered representative and financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities LLC, 7 Hanover Square, New York, New York, 10004, and at Fell Strategy Partners, 677 Alamoana Boulevard, Suite 720, Honolulu, Hawaii, 96813. This show is for informational purposes only. Individual risk tolerance and investment objectives must be reviewed prior to making any specific recommendations. And now your host, Marco Marco Muscovich. Welcome back. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource every week, weekly, Wednesday night, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. right here at 760 KGU, also online. Right now, we have a little pose on our website. It's under construction. We try to do a little bit of facelift. So pretty much you can hear us on old-fashioned way. Uh, or you, if you log in to 760 KGU website, you can stream live. Anyway, you're listening to Hawaii Money Resource every week, Wednesday night, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. right around the drive time. You can tune it in and hear all the latest when it comes to the running the business, preparing the business for exit and potential future sale, and just uh, learn about local businesses here in Honolulu. So if you have a guest, we will talk about them. We will talk about how they started their business, why they started a business, and how they get where they're at right now. And when we do not have a guest like today, we are running a business exit planning edition of Hawaii Money Resource. So today we're going to cover a lot of good topics. Uh, pretty much everything is going to be related to insider transfer when you are transferring your business to someone in within your company. Uh, or family member. And the topic for today will be avoiding disasters in insider transfers. So stay tuned. Do not change the channel. We're going to have a lot of good stuff that we're going to cover today. And we're going to kick it off first with a little update uh, just to give you a heads up what's going on in the overall world of exit right here in Honolulu, what's going on with the businesses and business owners that we are working pretty much daily that want to transfer the business and get out of the business in style. Well, we are recently seeing more and more uh, internal transfers, what is a good news, meaning that the businesses are going to stay in Hawaii and going to be continue to continue to be owned by local people right here in Honolulu and Hawaii in general. Uh, but out of every 10 businesses that we work, probably one business is looking to sell to the third party, and that third party is usually someone outside of Hawaii. Uh, a lot of internal transfers, like I said, and that's why today I'm going uh, to I'm gonna pretty much point out some of the things that we are seeing when we are talking to our business owners, uh, people that we are currently working with, and all the uh, pitfalls, concerns, challenges and pretty much experience that they're going through when they are transferring their business internally. I will say by far is probably underestimating the value of the business and also underestimating the time that will take for business to be transferred to the third party or transfer internally within the organization. So those are the two main challenges that we see right now as we are working with the business owner. Good thing is that we are seeing a lot of happening in uh, mergers, acquisition market right here in Honolulu, even though it's on a lower scale, smaller scale, smaller sizes, but probably in the range between two, three, five, up to $15 million in a sales price. What is not bad for Hawaii, right? Generally, Hawaii or traditionally Hawaii being a dead lower market that is uh, pretty much up to $5 million of transferred value. So let's talk about uh, 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 another issue that we're currently seeing a lot and pretty much 99%, 95% of the time when we're working with the business owners is lack of quality buy and sell agreements uh, that, you know, for some reason, uh, I think we're kind of turning into the, like, uh, uh, broken record, just talking and constantly reminding people about buy and sell agreements. But there is a reason why we are doing that, because we are still seeing the business owner not uh, doing a lot of quality drafted uh, um, buy and sell agreements, something that is constantly updated, something that they kind of put some thoughts to it, and they're, they were thinking you know, just for those times when 
partnerships are not in the honeymoon stage. Uh, so let's talk about maintaining the control, save on taxes, and set fair value using a buy and sell agreements. Uh, there is a strong case for creating a buy and sell agreements, as we already talked about it, for co-owned businesses. If owners agree about how to appraise business value and set the terms of payment in advance of any transfer event, they can avoid the heated and often damaging negotiations that can occur when one owner leaves the company. Even though, what we find out, even though that owner has a valid reasons for leaving the company and there is nothing hostile going there, this process can be tough. In this, uh, uh, in, today's, in today's show, we will continue making our case for buy and sell agreements by outlining several other advantages of well-drafted and recently reviewed buy and sell agreements. So if you have a buy and sell agreement somewhere on the shelf and you drafted like a long time ago, I will tell you, spend few few minutes, just dust it off, take a look at it, see what's written, how is it written, and if it still makes sense, uh, all those provisions that you put in place maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. So control transfers. A buy-sell agreement can control all transfer of business ownership to the benefit of both the owner wishing to transfer the ownership and the owners who want to acquire ownership. This agreement can assure that selling owner or his or her estate, in some instances the business owner may be passed away and now uh, partnerships are dealing within the estates and attorneys, is selling for a fair value and under terms and conditions that are acceptable to all parties. Further, the agreement assures remaining owners that any transfers of ownership must be at least offered to them. We call that first right of refusal to remaining partners. This elements the potential for any outside party or co-owner, spouse, or children to assume ownership of the business, all of which could negatively affect the company management control and value. So by having the first right of refusal, you're eliminating uh, some unexpected event like such as family member taking over the spot of, let's say, deceased original partner. A value, valuation from all reasons. A buy and sell agreement sets forth an agreed upon method of valuing the business that applies to all transfers. Owner's valuation of the owner business may be much different than IRS or co-owner's system or valuation. If owners rely on stated value or formula-based value, they might run into the difficulties with both the IRS and the other owners because value in a privately owned business changes often and rapidly. If buy and sell agreements are not revised every year, the valuation formulas will favor either the buyer or the seller and provide ample of opportunity for disputes. Owners can avoid this by requiring a value determination from a certified business appraiser, but even that the provision needs to be drafted carefully. So as you can see, buy and sell agreements, it's pretty much heart and soul of your partnership and it will pretty much help you govern in any case of any transfer of shares. Similarly, if co-owners buy a living co-owner's interest, the value of the selling owner's interest will likely be lower in the buyer co-owner's opinion than the seller's. And that's pretty common. Seller wants maximum price for their shares and buyers wants to pay as little as possible. However, if their buy and sell agreement requires the involvement of the business appraiser, they can avoid this pretty much obstacle. Meaning, appraiser comes in, value the business and says, here you go, this is the current fair ma uh, market value. In the best to agree today on a method of valuing the business when no owner knows which side of the transfer table he or she will be sitting on. Not knowing whether you will be a buyer or seller tends to ensure that all owners work to protect the interests of both the buyer and the seller. If owners don't have an ex existing binding process for valuing the business, ideally using a credentialed business appraiser can expect disagreements when one of the owners leaves the business. We strongly recommend that the owners take the, uh, all the 
valuation appraisal process suitable for their companies, not lightly, and we will be happy to point you in the right direction. So if you have a questions how to start the process of valuation and who to talk to, give us a call, 695-2102, 695-2102. We'll be more than happy to point you in the right direction. We probably, not probably, but every single business owner that we are working currently on a business exit planning uh, as a part of the process need to see the business evaluator and make sure that they have a right price for their business. And let me tell you why. If you don't have the value that business owner want to transfer internally or externally, there is no way that we can draft the transfer of money because we don't know what we're working with. One very important vari- variable in that okay uh, in that transaction and that uh, equation is what is the worth of that business or value of those shares. So the fine print, in the buy and sell agreement, owners can fix the terms and conditions of any transfer of ownership, including interest rate, length of buyout period, and security. In addition, it often is possible to provide the funding for future ownership acquisition, either during the owner's lifetime or after the death. Business valuation is not only important in case you're transferring the shares. It's also important when you're going to the bank and acquiring some additional funding or some additional money for future project because bank will need to see where you're standing with the value of your business. If you come to them prepared with report that was recently done, they more likely they will give you that line of credit or that additional funding that you need for that project. Finally, you can save on income taxes. The buy and sell agreement should be drafted to anticipate the likeliest transfer event, the sale of ownership interest from one owner to another. While they require additional planning and document drafting, inter- intra-owner sales or internal transfer can be designed to save as much as 30% of the company's cash flow from taxation. For example, if the purchase price is a million, the cash flow required to pay a departing owner could be reduced for 300000 or more. To repeat, this does take additional tax planning, but the result is well worth doing it. And of course, if you have a, a tax advisor, CPA, they can help you more with that and they can give you a tax advice when it comes to the transfer or reduce purchase price of the internal transfer or, or internal shares. So if you are wondering what you need to do, we, we are strongly recommend to give us a call because we have the knowledge. Uh, we have expertise. We did it before. We're doing it constantly. It's something that we do every day. That's pretty much all we do, uh, my team and myself, in our office with our clients and business owners. Don't just think because you read one of our books uh, on exit planning that you are now expert in exit planning. We have those scenarios uh, when people think that they can do it themselves, they, they usually tell me, hey, I have a CPA or uh, hey, I have an attorney and they can do it. And I tell them, great, that's awesome. You need those team members in place. But just six, down, six months down the road, what's going to happen, uh, these people have their expertise in their respect, respected areas of expertise. They might know how to draft a buy and sell agreement. They might know how to draft a legal agreement. But when it comes to the flow of money between the existing owner and the new owner, that's where we come handy because we know how to do it. 695-2102 is a phone number. You can reach us anytime. We'll be more happy to talk to you. There is uh, preliminary consultations are uh, uh, comp- uh, complementary. There is no cost. Call us, inquire. You will at least uh, get your uh, questions answered sooner. Why don't we take our first break? You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource every Wednesday night, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. We are here as, uh, helping you get out of that business in style, and you know that you need to talk about it and think about it. So give us a call, 695-2102, 695-2102. We'll be right back. Seven sixty KGU, part of the Wall Street Business Network. This is what they had to say: A father is always present. I mean, what father? What real father figure can you have if they're not there? 
In order to be a good dad, you need to love love your son. You need to put gas in your car so you don't break down in the middle of nowhere. And you need to make some breakfast. Yep. I mean, just to maybe um, play, like, a board game with me or to just stay home and play um, some video games with me. Just to do, like, that one little thing is what I really look forward to. I'm not asking him to be a perfect dad, but he should try. He's just a constant force in my life. There's a love like a dad's love because it's not comparable to anything else. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Want to have some fun with history? Visit americaslibrary.gov with your kids and have a blast with the past. Cool pictures, fun facts, even mini-movies. americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. A message brought to you by the Library of Congress. You're listening to Marco Muscovich on AM760. More than 4,000 other listeners tune in daily to hear Marco talk about investment strategies and his new area of expertise, business exit planning. If you're ready to take it to the next level, Mr. Muscovich invites you to attend one of his complimentary seminars. Each month, he offers a seminar for business owners interested in business exit planning. For everybody else, he offers a second seminar on investment strategies. Either way, you'll get such a wealth of information that I'm going to attend one right now. For information on how you can attend, visit hawaiimoneyresource.com. The lawyers can take it from here. <coughs> Registered representative and financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities, LLC, PAS, OSJ7, Hanover Square, New York, New York, 10004, 1 Securities products and advisory services offered through PAS member FINRA, SIPC, financial representative of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, Guardian, New York, New York, PAS is an indirect wholly owned subsidiary of Guardian. Wealth Strategy Partners, LLC, is not an affiliate or subsidiary of PAS or Guardian. 2014 16224, expiration 1 You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource with financial advisor Marco Muscovich. If you'd like to speak to Marco, either on the air or after the show, call toll-free from Oahu and the Outer Islands, 877-695-2102. That's 877-695-2102. Welcome back. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource. My name is Marco Muscovich, senior partner at Wealth Strategy Partners, also certified exit planner. And what that means to you is that all I do with my team in the office at Wealth Strategy Partners is helping the business owners successfully structure transition and transition plan between them and whoever else is coming on board and buying those shares. Okay. So today's topic is avoiding disasters in insider transfer. In the first segment of our show, we talk a little bit more and we remind you a little bit about buy and sell agreement and importance of those buy and sell agreements, especially within the internal transfer. Now we're going to go and talk about uh, those avoiding, how to avoid those disasters in insider transfer. And we're going to also talk about elements of plan to sell to insider. So like we always do, we share a lot of stories. Uh, Those stories are stories of business owners like yourself that went through the process either here locally or somewhere on the mainland. And a lot of time we change the names and locations and everything just to make sure that we protect your um, privacy and make sure everything is confidential. So so the guy named Steve Smith was no different than a million of other baby boomer business owners in that the thought of leaving his business was never far from his mind, no matter how far away his exit might have been. He daydreamed about transferring the business to his oldest daughter and perhaps to a member of his management team. Yet, he could engage their passion for owning a business and had not tested their management skills. And of course, they had no money. And that's one of the biggest pitfalls of internal transfer. Steve's company was his economic and financial lifeline. Without its income, his ability to use the business to accumulate wealth the ability to sell his interest to a buyer and who had cash and plan, Steve wishes would never come true. To Steve, it was obvious that if he ever wanted to exit the business in style, he needed to wait for white knight buyer to appear on his doorsteps bearing a saddle bags of cash. So Steve did what many other owners in his position do, and that's nothing. 
If you think that transferring the business to your children or management team is risky, you are absolutely right. Insider transfers are risky for three reasons. Number one, insider have no money. Successor management ownership skills and commitment to ownership may be untested. And number three, owners lose control of the business if they make the transfer before they are completely cashed out. On the other hand, the possible benefits of inside transfer include the following. Number one, keeping the business in the owner family or exist, extending the owner's legacy through his or her hand-picked management group. Number one. Number two, motivating, retaining, and rewarding the key employees. Number three, re re reaping more after-tax money than third-party transfer. Number four, retaining control unit all or most of the purchase price received. Number five, remaining active in the business while gradually reduce day-to-day -day responsibilities. And number six, providing time for owners to build up personal assets via distribution of cash before their exit. So those are the, all the good reasons why the internal transfers happen. I will add one more thing that what we see when we're working with a business owner and challenges that are greater if the business value is greater. If the business value is up to a million, that transfer internally can be seamless, smooth, and very likely to happen when we're transferring the business that value is three million, five million. Then you're seeing probably more hurdle that you need to go through as a business owner, especially transferring that business internally. So the trick is to design a plan that minimizes risk so owners can reap all of the potential benefits. So let's first look at how that might be done. So you have a pen and paper. I know you're going to write it down because you are that do-it-yourself kind of guy and you do not have, need anybody's help, especially business exit planning specialist help. And I know you can do it yourself. And pretty much let's see how you can do it. Number one, insiders have no money. Therefore, it's too risky to sell to them. That's true if owners don't design transfer strategy that puts money in the insider's pockets as they increase the value of the company. Owners have to work steadily and effectively to build the cash flow, the source of all cash outs. True, the number one, installation of value drivers and B, carefully planning to minimize taxation years in advance of the transfer. Unless owners carefully plan to avoid it, cash flow can be taxed twice. This double tax sometimes totaling more than 50%, to be more accurate, close to 70% of the total payout can be spell disaster for many internal transfer. However, through effective tax planning, much of this tax burden can be le legally avoided. Finally, owners... And their advisors, including the certified business appraiser, should use modest but, but defensible value for the company. By using a lower value as the purchase price, the size of the tax will be correspondingly reduced. The difference between what owners will receive from the stay, sale of the business at the lower price and what owners want to be paid after they leave the business is made good through a number of different techniques to extract cash from company after the owner leaves it. Number two, successor management ownership skills are untested. If the successor ownership skills are untested, owners should create a written plan to systematically transition management and ownership responsibilities to their successors beginning today. The transition period during which owner tests both their assumptions and their successor skills usually takes several years to complete. And the last obstacle why business owners do not want to sell to internally is losing control before being cashed out. This only happens if owners and their advisors fail to implement a transfer strategy designed to keep the owner in control until he or she receives the full sale price for the business. In a, property, in a properly crafted plan, owners keep control through a well-designed an incremental sale of the company based on improving company cash flow over time. There are four, key re four keys to reducing the risk of in internal transfer. Number one, 
plan the transfer well in advance of your desired exit date. Executing, and see, executing the insider transfer takes longer than expecting a sale to a third party. Number two, implement value building activities which are just as, if not more, important to any inside and transfer as they are to a sale to a third party. Number three, design the plan to be tax sensitive. And number four, last one, write the plan down and hold advisors accountable. So if you want to act in our capacity as a business exit planner or certified exit planner, those are the three ways how you can prepare your internal transfer. And again, do you really want to do it? My question to the business owners, do you really want to do it yourself without anybody helps? Like you don't have other responsibilities to worry about. Like you don't have a business to run. I will say you probably will be better off if you have advisor, someone like us, be a part of your team and help you quarterback this whole process. And this process sometimes can be lengthy. I will just give you a quick example. We have a process started last year with one of the business owners. Internal transfer value of the business is less than $5 million. And guess what? Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between the attorneys and team members and everybody else. Finally, we got to the solution and finally deals should be signed sometimes tomorrow morning. And as you can see, even though it's internal transfer, even though it's something that is you know, we, we find the creative way how to transfer the money. It still took some time before everything is ironed out. And the reason why is because everybody has a, things to do. Business owners, partners, they all have a business to run. There is a trips, there is a projects, there is a other stuff that you need to worry while you're going through the process. And of course, we are there constantly to keep everybody accountable, make sure that this process is properly done. I have a, uh, this was a little bit about a how to avoiding, how to avoid disasters in inside and transfer. That's actually our topic for today, how to avoid inside and transfer uh, disasters. There is also elements of plan to sell to insiders and those elements I will cover right after we come back from the break. You're listening Business Exit Planning Edition of Hawaii Money Resource. My name is Marko Miuškovic. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And don't forget to call us at 695-2102. 695-2102. And check us, businessexitplanninghawaii.com. Businessexitplanninghawaii.com. Stay tuned, and I'll be, I'll be right back. Seven sixty KGU, part of the Wall Street Business Network. Salem Media of Hawaii proudly supports the community around us. The Ko'olau District of the BSA is continuing our newest tradition. And on June 24th, 2017, we will host the second annual Windy 500 event. Sponsors will have the opportunity to participate in a Pinewood Derby race from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at Windward Ford in Kailua. The scouts of the Ko'olau Windward District will be your future professionals, managers, and executives. Scouts acquire a diverse set of skills and a commitment to community service. Most importantly, they become responsible, well-rounded adults. But to get there, they need your help and support. To obtain an application to enter a Pinewood Derby car into this race event or to make a donation, contact Paul Vierling at 808-286-2667 or email him at paulv at hawaiigs.com. 808-286-2667. Did you just look down at your phone? You did it again, didn't you? You know, you're flying down the road in a three-ton hunk of steel. And a text takes your eyes off the road for an average of five seconds. At 55 miles per hour, that's long enough to travel the length of a football field and cause some serious damage. Turn it off. Trust me. Whatever it is, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Every single year, millions of average Americans like you have their personal lives virtually destroyed. In an instant, you could lose control of your bank accounts, credit cards, and worse, your very reputation can be stolen and violated. If you or a loved one is a victim of identity theft, FastIDRecovery.com can help you get it all back. 
At FastIDRecovery.com, you can put your trust in experts in the field of credit score restoration, IRS fraud resolution, document and ID replacement, and more. Without a fully managed protection and restoration service like FastIDRecovery.com, it can take hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars to reclaim what identity thieves have stolen and fix the chaos they leave behind. Your peace of mind is as valuable as your assets, and FastIDRecovery.com will get everything back, including your sanity. Relief is a simple click away at FastIDRecovery.com. That's FastIDRecovery.com. Achieving personal financial success can be complicated. Marco Muscovich can make it simpler. That's something very good to know in a world where the wrong financial decisions can be all too costly. Marco Muscovich, Vice President of Wealth Strategy Partners, has been helping people in Hawaii successfully organize and plan their finances for years. Marco uses an holistic approach to help you balance your current financial obligations as well as your future concerns. And he does this while keeping things simple. Organizing your finances is serious business, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Find out how Marco can help you make smart, informed decisions about your financial future. Call him and schedule your complimentary session and tell him your story. He's there to listen. The toll-free number to call is 877-695-2102. That's 877-695-2102. 877-695-2102. Marco Muscovich. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource with financial advisor Marco Muscovich. If you'd like to speak to Marco, either on the air or after the show, call toll-free from Oahu and the Outer Islands, 877-695-2102. That's 877-695-2102. Welcome back. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource. My name is Marco Muscovich, senior partner at Wealth Strategy Partners, also certified exit planner. Today we have a business exit planning edition of Hawaii Money Resource. Resource. Hawaii Money Resource on the air every Wednesday, 5 to 6 p.m. We are here to give you a little bit of reality check when it comes to your business and how you can position that business so one day you can get out of that business in style. Don't forget, it's possible, it's doable. There is all kind of different ways how you can transfer the business and there is all kind of different ways who you can transfer this business to. The thing is that you need to know how to do it. And a lot of time, you doing it by yourself is going to take longer and you might make some costly mistakes. So I'm encouraging you to give us a call, 695-2102, 695-2102. Or if you're calling us for, from far, far, far away, one 695 2102 Best number to reach me and my team in the office. So let Let's talk about today's topic, avoiding disasters in insider transfer. We talk about insider transfer and risk of uh, what are the three risks that uh, business owners are usually facing when he's transferring the business internally. Uh, So now we're going to talk about elements of the good plan to sell to insider. So today, uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, we are discussing the essential elements of the plan owner used to transfer a business to insider that keep the owner in control until he or she is paid the sale price. Remember this, in control until he or she is paid the sale price. If you suspect that the children, key employees or co-owners you would pick to succeed you do not have the funds to cash you out, consider the following 10 elements that make insider transfer successful. Number one, time. A transfer to insider takes time, time to plan, time to implement, and time for successors to pay the departing owner. Time to plan, time to implement, and time for money to transfer into your pockets. Typically, the more time owners take to transfer the company, the less risk they incur and more money they receive from the new owners. Therefore, the first question an owner must answer is, am I willing to take a time, typically three to eight years, to execute and complete an insider transfer while maintaining the control? If the answer is no, then it's probably best to consider exit path, other exit path like a sell to the third party. 
Element number two, defined owner objectives. If owners are willing to devote the time necessary to transfer the business to insider, insiders, they also must define and or quantify their objectives. This may include the following. First, financial security independence. Number two, departure retirement by cho chosen date. Number three, keeping family legacy or company culture intact, rewarding the key employees, and taking the business to the next level on someone else's dime. Very true. This all steps and all these, all these uh, important objectives are very critical when we are transferring the business internally. And I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the show, out of every 10 businesses that we work, one business is external transfer or sell to the third party. Nine out of 10 transfers are internal. In well-designed transfer plan, these objectives are met before control is transfer. Element number three is a cash flow. Healthy cash flow is critical to any sale. No buyer, whatever outside, third party or insider, wants to buy a company with the anemic cash flow. However, in transfer to insider, cash flow assumes very important spot. It is a major, if not sole source of any owner sales proceed because most of the internal transfer depends on the cash flow because they are earnouts. Earnouts definition of earnouts is business business cash flow is financing internal transfer over a period of time. Next element number four is growth in business value. Like healthy cash flow, buyers look and pay top dollar for companies that have the potential to grow in value in transfers to insider. Ownership transfers generally occur only if cash flow continues to grow. Therefore, it's vitally important that owners contemplating that insider transfer installed and cultivate value drivers before and during their exit transition. So if you are wondering what the, uh, the, the value drivers are, if you go to our website, businessexitplanninghawaii.com, and you click on resources, under the resources, and you click on white papers, you can see a bunch of different white papers, and the first one that pops up is, guess what, value drivers. So if you go to our website, businessexitplanninghawaii.com, under resources, click on white papers, and then you can download the value drivers white paper that can tell you pretty much everything that you need to know. What are those value drivers inside of the business that you can grow so the value of your business grows? Number five. Element number five is capable management that, that, that desires ownership. Listen, if you want to transfer the business to unmotivated manager just because he's there and he's convenient, even though you show him the best possible plan that's not going to cost him a dime out of pocket because just because he's not motivated to be a business owner, he's not going to buy into it. So you need a capable management that desires the ownership. The key word here is desire. Having a motivating management team capable of replacing the owner is hugely valuable to any buyer, especially when the buyer is insider. The management team that succeeds the owner must desire ownership and be willing to sign personally for any acquisition, financing, or ongoing company debt. Owners often assume that their management team wants to own their companies, but sometimes management team bulk when they realize that they have to pay for the ownership. Therefore, assuring that the management team not only desire ownership, but is willing to do that. Let me give you a real life story. Just recently, we have a couple of business owners that came to us, business been around since 1988, Today, this year, is a good year for a business owner to start preparing transfer. They want to transfer it internally. They have their general manager in the business already positioned. They got hired a while ago with the idea that eventually one day he will take over the business. And guess what? In one of our meetings during the process of exit planning, I do make we do make an interview with that 
key person. And we ask the questions such as, are you really willing to buy this business? How much skin in the game you would like to put in? Why you want to buy this business? Are you really sure that you really want to buy this business versus going out and maybe starting your own business? Right? So all these confirmation, these questions, these concerns that we're putting on the table is just to make sure that actually that key person answered all these questions to themselves before they go and the process starts. Because a lot of time people just want to do something because it sounds good, sounds exciting to be a business owner. But then they, they really didn't put any thoughts to it. They really didn't think about it that now, you know, guess what? They own this business. They need to meet the payroll. Sometimes they don't get paid because they need to meet everybody else's payroll. You know, it's going to take time before they start feeling extra cash flow just because they were paying the exiting uh, business owner up to last year. And on another one that is usually overlooked, do you have a family support? Does your spouse really support you in that idea of buying the business, you as a key uh, employee of that business? Sometimes spouse just want you to be at home at 6 o'clock, you know, and want to spend the weekends with you and, and maybe do not understand what does it take for a for business to run and you now being at, you know away most of the time. Does the spouse, did you get a buy-in from your spouse? That's a very critical question. If you know Mary, of course, you don't have a problem. <laughs> okay, element number six, minimizing the taxes. Most owners don't want to pay any more taxes than they are legally required to pay. And of course, you're asking, what taxes are you talking about? I'm talking about taxes on the sale of your shares. Owners who are contemplating inside and transfer must take special care to minimize taxes. And guess what? There is a good, uh, good news there. When you're transferring internally, there is a different ways how you can structure the deal that can be very tax beneficial. In insight and transfer, it's imperative that owners and their advisors structure the sale of the business to minimize taxes on the company's cash flow and pre-tax income. Because without planning, cash flow is taxed twice: once when the insider receives it as a new owner, and then pays the taxes before paying the owner to purchase the company. And again, they're paying the taxes when the owner pays taxes on the proceeds received. We call that double taxation. Guess who makes the most money in that type of a deal? Of course, our best friend, Uncle Sam. Okay, so... On go one goal of tax planning is to subject the company's cash flow to taxation only once. Accomplishing this, feel, uh, accomplishing this takes considerable planning, but it's worth the time and effort to save the third or more of the company cash flow from this type of double taxation. If you ever come to our events, like uh, uh, exit planning events, when we are actually showing how the structures are done, one of the slides in our presentation is actually showing and, and it's quantifying this double taxation and how much actually business is under pressure to meet all these double taxation so the business owner nets the same amount of money. Uh, I'm be more than happy to talk to you more into the details. So if you have any questions, again, 695-2102. One-time taxation means owners receive more money more quickly and thereby reduces the risk that the existing owner will not be paid in full. Element number seven. We have a 10 elements. Don't forget. We're so almost there. Regulate and, incre and incremental transfer of ownership. One of the most important advantages of well-designed inside and transfer plan is that it gives the owner the ability to regulate how ownership is transferred, when is it transferred, and how much ownership is transferred. If company performance falters, employees stumble, or the owner chose instead to sell to a third party, a well-designed insider transfer exit plan keeps the owner in the driver's seat. Very important. Very important. Element number eight, increasing control means decreasing the risk. While business owners take the risk every day, they don't really, really, they're really risking their own and their family's future, financial security. Therefore, we as a planners use strategies to keep voting and operational control in the hands of the owner. 
this shifts operational business risks from the existing owner to incoming owners, so the existing owners stay in control of their companies until they receive entire sales price. If you'd like to talk about these many ways, how to accomplish this and how to structure this kind of transfer, you can always give us a call. Don't forget, 695-2102. I just want to remind you, there is a lot of resources on our website. We created this website with the you know, sole purpose for you to go online and easily kind of download these white papers, all these important things that you can read on, prepare on, because there's a lot of businesses out there, business owners, they want to prepare, they want to read, they want to grasp the concept before they contact us and pretty much ask us questions directly and the questions that pertain to their situation. So if you go to businessexitplanninghawaii.com, under the resources, you can you can find all this. You can find the articles, press releases, white papers. You can even watch the videos. I mean, this is just a huge. If you have no time to go to our workshops, you can go online. And we I, I think we posted two as of now. Uh, one was one happened earlier this year in March. Uh, other one happened last year in September. And we have another uh, a business exit advisory board workshop that is coming. Sometimes towards the end of the year, we, we try to minimize just to make it very exciting. If you just go on those links and watch this video, we have a whole hour or, or hour and a half, I'm not even sure, of the Business Exit Planning Advisory Board answering all these questions and you know going through the, through the questions that business owner put out there and you know, ask us directly during our workshops and seminars. I mean, just it's priceless resources. So if you... You know, miss our show every Wednesday night, or you you don't you you have a, a phonophobia and you don't want to give us a call and ask questions. Hey, there is a website. Nobody will question you anything uh, while you're going on a web website and you know browsing through all these important uh, videos and resources available there. Element number nine, and once we finish this, we're going to take our last break. Element number nine is write written roadmap with deadlines. Key keyword here is deadlines. To succeed, we believe that owners must put their transfer plans in written document and communicate it clearly and regularly to the eventual owners, to future owners. If the plan is not in writing, it simply is not credible, and neither the owner nor his or her employees will take it seriously. More importantly, the written plan is the playbook for owner's exit. Owners will use their written plans to coordinate their actions with those of their advisors. Uh, therefore, therefore, reducing delays and cost. And, and I'm telling you why is this important? Because if it's not in writing, it doesn't exist. If it's in your business owner little head and you're keeping it there, you're not putting it on the paper, how are the people going to know? You know, so you, you are busy already to begin with. You, you think you're going to find a time to talk about this all the time? versus just pointing it out in a written plan where the, all these people around you can read it and, and see where they're at. So the plan should include timeline and provide accountability for all participants, including you, business owner. Without incremental stage checkpoints, it's nearly impossible for owners to exit on their terms. Remember when people ask you when you want to get out and you said in five years, and then three years later I ask you when you want to get out and you said in five years, if you do the math correctly, and last time I checked, 3 plus 5 is 8. Now you're 8 years into it already versus 5 if you had the uh, accountability in place. So you will never finish a marathon if you don't have mile-by-mile mile goals to meet. And the last element, number 10, is owner education. Owners need to understand then ins and outs of inside and transfer because unlike sales to the third party, they will control their business and the exit process until they've been paid in full. Keyword, paid in full. That education begins as you read and listen to our radio show and then read some of our articles and white papers posted on the website businessexitplanninghawaii.com. We would love to teach you more about the ins and outs of insight and transfer and share our experience and proven success in addressing these elements with you. Please do not hesitate. Give us a call, 695-2102, 695-2102. And if you're calling from somewhere else other than Hawaii, one 695 2102 My name is Mark Komiushko. You're listening to Business Exit Planning, edition of Hawaii Money Resource. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
760 KGU. Part of the Wall Street Business Network. Salem Media of Hawaii proudly supports the community around us. It may be summer vacation for us, but that doesn't mean the same for hospitals. 200 blood donors are needed every day, and only 2% of our population gives. Give blood. Save lives. Donate now through September 4th and enter to win free groceries each week with a chance for a neighbor island getaway for two. Call 848-4770 or visit Blood Bank of Hawaii at bbh.org for official rules. We all want to retire someday, but how will we afford it? Marko Mirškovic here, financial advisor for Wealth Strategy Partners. Times are tough, but nothing brings comfort and security like having a financial strategy. Some financial strategies can be complicated. All those numbers and percentage points, it makes your head spin. But that's why I created an easier-to-understand system called Retirement Income Timeline. Let me analyze your situation using my Retirement Income Timeline, and I'll show you how you may be able to turn your money worries of today into a stress-free retirement of tomorrow. It's easy. Just call me and I'll assist you. Get your personal retirement income timeline by me, Marko Mjuskovic, today. Call 695-2102. 695-2102. Registered representative and financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities, LLC, abbreviated PAS, 7 Hanover Square, New York, New York, 10004. Securities products or services and advisory services are offered through PAS, a registered broker-dealer and investment advisor. 888-600-4667. PAS is a member of FINRA SIPC. Achieving personal financial success can be complicated. Marko Muscovich can make it simpler. That's something very good to know in a world where the wrong financial decisions can be all too costly. Marko Muscovich, Vice President of Wealth Strategy Partners, has been helping people in Hawaii successfully organize and plan their finances for years. Marco uses an holistic approach to help you balance your current financial obligations as well as your future concerns. And he does this while keeping things simple. Organizing your finances is serious business, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Find out how Marco can help you make smart, informed decisions about your financial future. Call him and schedule your complimentary session and tell him your story. He's there to listen. The toll-free number to call is 877-695-2102. That's 877-695-2102. 877-695-2102. Marco Muscovich. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource with financial advisor Marco Muscovich. If you'd like to speak to Marco, either on the air or after the show, call toll-free from Oahu and the Outer Islands, 877-695-2102. That's 877-695-2102. Welcome back. You're listening to Hawaii Money Resource. My name is Marko Mjuskovic, Senior Partner at Wealth Strategy Partners, also Certified Exit Planner. By the way, when I started doing this back in the days, now there was only one Certified Exit Planner in the state of Hawaii. Now we have a quite a few. A lot of team uh, team members grow in our office. Now we have like four Certified Exit Planners right here in our office in Honolulu. And then since we have offices across the three other states, um, there is more certified exit planners out there helping business owners like yourself smartly and creatively get out of the business. We call that getting out of the business in style. Since we have like a few minutes left to the end of the show, I just want to point you out to our unlimited resources that you have uh, by just you being listener of radio show Hawaii Money Resource every week, Wednesday night at 5 p.m. Don't forget uh, this weekend, I mean this this week we talk about it Avoiding disasters in insight and transfer. That was the topic for today's show. And we didn't have a guest, but we did have a business exit planning edition of Hawaii Money Resource. What I want to uh, just point you out is the resources that you have offline when I'm not on the air and you're not listening to our show. You can go online to businessexitplanninghawaii.com. Businessexitplanninghawaii.com. And under the resources section, you can pretty much get a lot of good stuff. Got a, got a lot of good articles that you can read. White papers, my favorite white papers. White papers is just like uh, different topics uh, in pertain- that pertaining to the business exit planning that you can read and get yourself better educated. Uh, if, uh, there is also a book uh, that we usually give out to our potential uh, business owners that, that want to work with us as a part of educational process. When you come and meet us in the office, we give you a book, How to Run Your Business So You Can Exit in Style. You can buy that book as well online online. Um, 
but that's something that we give as a part of the education. So don't forget business exit planning, Hawaii.com business exit planning, Hawaii.com. That's it for today. My, today, my name is Marko Mirškovic, senior partner at Well Strategy Partners. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. The Living Balance Sheet and the Living Balance Sheet logo are registered service marks of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, New York, New York. The graphics and text used herein are the exclusive property of Guardian and protected under U.S. and international copyright laws. Copyright 2005 to 2011. The Guardian Life Insurance Company of America. This show is for informational purposes only. Individual risk tolerance and investment objectives must be reviewed prior to making any specific recommendations. Marco Muscovich is a registered representative and financial advisor for Park Avenue Securities, LLC, 7 Hanover Square, New York, New York, 10004. Securities products, services, and advisory services are offered through Park Avenue Securities, a registered broker, dealer, and investment advisor, 888-600-4667. Financial representative, the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, New York, New York. Park Avenue Securities is an indirect, wholly owned subsidiary of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America. Wealth Strategy Partners is not an affiliate or subsidiary of Park Avenue Securities or the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America. Park Avenue Securities is a member of FINRA SIPC.